Hello everyone, I'm back with another problem on uh, the method of joints and uh, we're going to look at uh, something uh, that is a new concept which is called as a zero force member as we solve the problem. Okay, so here is a problem in front of you. Um, as you can see, uh, there are uh, several bars of this truss. I'm just going to list all the uh, bars. Okay, so first of all, I'll just write down the problem. Okay, find uh, the forces in all the bars of the truss. Okay, so find the force. Uh, in each bar of the truss okay so that is the first uh, thing that we need to find out and then uh, state if they are in tension or compression Okay, so this is uh, what we need to actually do in this problem. Find the force in each of the bars of the truss. Uh, we are not asked to find a support reaction. So probably uh, that is uh, something that I'm prob not interested in, if, if that is indeed the case. Uh, but at the end of the problem, if we have some time, I'll tell you how to find the support reactions as well. Okay, it's not a big deal. Uh, let me move this problem a little away from all that uh, stuff that is written down there. All right, fantastic. Now, in this problem, what do I have? What are all the bars of this problem? Okay, so the bars that I have, okay, there are several of them, you see, this is, there is AB, and then there is uh, BC, and then there is uh, CD, okay, then there is uh, DE, then there is uh, EF, okay, and then there is uh, AG, and then there is GF, and then there is GH, and then there is HC, okay and then there is uh, jc and then there is je so that's like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven bars so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven bars okay i'm hoping uh, that i have uh, each of these bars and ef yes i already took care of that all right so these are the bars and then the pins okay they are a b c d e f g h and j okay and uh, we're going to use a method of joints okay so use method of joints okay and uh, typically what you will eventually find out is that uh, you cannot solve every problem using the method of joints because it is going to be kind of ridiculous i mean are you going to be spending the rest of your life just solving one problem Right, because it's going to take a pretty long time to use the method of joints to find all of these things. And so later on, we will learn a better technique, which is the method of sections, uh, which means if you're interested only in some bars, then you can use that to quickly find the force in those bars and then use method of joints for other bars. Okay, so you can use a combination of the techniques. Okay, uh, but in this problem, my aim is to solve it using the method of joints. Okay, how do I start this problem? I start this problem by looking at uh, each and every pin, you know, so I don't know which uh, pin to uh, look at. So I'm going to start alphabetically, but before that, a couple of things. I'm going to assume, so solution, okay, so assume, so first thing is I list out all of these things, okay, so then I list out the number of bars, then I list out the number of pins. I just keep track of them, okay, assume each bar to be in tension to begin with okay which means that bars in tension will pull on the pins okay that is uh, when you draw the pin free body diagram those forces due to the bars will be pulling on the uh, pins okay so I'm going to start off by looking at uh, the free body diagram of the pin at A. Okay, so that is my first uh, step. And when I do that, right, there are only two bars connected there. So there's bar AB and then there's bar AG. So I draw the free body diagram of the pin at A. So let me take each of these uh, two things. Or let, let me start off by looking at the free body diagram of A. So FBD of pin at A. Why am I starting at A? Because I don't have a strategy. I absolutely don't have a strategy and I'm, I'm going to tell you a strategy at the end of the problem. 
Okay, so I'm going to start at A and I'm going to draw the uh, pin at A. And if you want, you can look at these bars which are at uh, the pin A. There is bar AB and then there is bar AG. Both of them are assumed to be in tension, so they are pulling on the pin, which means that the forces due to these bars will be acting in the following manner. Okay, so this will be in the following manner. Okay. And let's see, this is uh, the situation that is given. One thing that I forgot to give you are the dimensions. So I'm going to go back and, and uh, let you know about the dimensions. So this is going to be F, A, B, and then this is going to be F, A, G. Okay, this is uh, some angle theta, which I'm not really interested in at this point in time. But let me go back and give the dimensions at least. Um, I have the distances as the following. So distance, the heights are all 4 meters. Okay, and all of these are 3 meters each okay and uh, this is also three meters so this is a three four five uh, triangle in a sense okay uh, so if you want you can uh, mark this as a three four five slope triangle here okay so i'm going to throw that out and then i'm going to have a slope triangle three four and five okay uh, so this is the pin at a. this is the first thing that i'm doing and uh, i immediately see okay I'm going to set up a positive and a negative x and y direction. So this is my positive x direction. This is my negative, a positive y direction. Pins are in equilibrium. I'm treating them as particles. I take this force F, A, B and I break it into components. Okay, and it's very obvious to see. We have run this for uh, quite a while now. Whenever you're drawing components, please don't forget. Components always start from the point of application. Okay, so I'm going to draw the components this way. So maybe... I will move this FAG and then bring that guy down here. All right, fantastic. So this is going to be uh, 3 fifths FAB. And then this is going to be 4 fifths FAB. Okay. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to start summing forces up. Sum of all the forces. Let me start off by summing forces in the Y direction. There is nothing sacred about this. Okay, I can sum forces in the x direction, I can sum forces in the y direction, there is nothing wrong with that. Okay, so this essentially tells me 4 fifths F A B is equal to 0, which means that, hey, what do you know? F A B is 0 newtons. This is beautiful. Okay, and uh, then if I do the sum of forces in the x direction, okay, I set these to be equal to 0. What are my forces? I'm going to have 3 fifths. FAB plus FAG is equal to 0, which means that FAG is equal to minus 3 fifths FAB, but FAB is 0, which means this is 0, which tells me that FAG is also 0 newtons. This is once again another very beautiful result. Okay, and such bars which do not carry any force at that time of analysis are called as zero force members. Okay, so the bars F uh, bars AB and AG are called as the zero force members. Okay, and then I'll, I'll spend a, a different lecture uh, on explaining what is the use of a zero force member. I'll explain this in a different lecture, which will be forthcoming. Okay, these are called zero force members. They do not do not carry any force on them <coughs> for that given loading arrangement. Okay, so these are typically zero force members are used for structural stability. Okay. are used for structural stability okay and uh, the details of this will be forthcoming in another lecture so we will discuss discuss uh, this in another lecture Okay, for the time being, my aim is to finish off this problem and then introduce you to the concept of uh, zero force members. So, 
we now come to the first uh, criterion for uh, zero force uh, members okay and uh, here is the criterion at a free pin okay a pin that is not connected to the ground or to a roller if there are no external forces acting on that pin and if the two bars if there are two bars connected at a pin and they are non collinear then both the bars are zero force members okay so once again i'm going to go back and look at my main figure here look at the pin at a the pin at a is not connected to the ground neither is it connected to a roller and at the pin a i don't have any external forces acting on this pin as well and at the pin a i have these two bars a b and a g which are non collinear right they don't share the same line of action which means that they're both going to be zero force members so the criterion for analyzing uh, zero force members so first criterion so first criterion for obtaining zero force members by inspection that is we just look at the truss and then we see okay if i see a situation of this kind then i have a pair of zero force members there and then i'm going to have two more criteria which i will be writing in a minute okay so if at a free pin i'm sorry that was not what i wanted <laughs> something suddenly happened i got scared all right um so if so at a free pin a pin not uh, connected to the ground or to a roller okay if no external forces act at that pin similar to what we have at pin a for example at pin a and if two bars intersect at that pin and if two bars intersect at that pin with the bars being non collinear then both the bars are zero force members both the bars are zero force members Okay, so this is the first criterion for analyzing uh, zero force members. So we have done that at the pin at A. Now I'm going to move on. Okay, so I'm going to move on and uh, let me start by copying my figure here. Okay, uh, let me start looking at this each and every time. So I'm going to come uh, bring that guy down here and then I'm going to say, okay, hey, what are all the things that I have found out? I'm just going to tick off the zero force members. So I am done with this bar AB. I'm done with this bar AG. Okay, uh, so where do I go on? I go to the pin at B next. Okay, why am I going to the pin at B? Because I'm just uh, following an alphabetical order here. There is no rhyme and reason to go to pin at B, but I'm just doing it. I can go to pretty much any pin I want. Okay, so then I draw the free body diagram. The second step, free body diagram of uh, pin at B. Okay, so here is the pin. Uh, one thing you've got to keep in mind is that the force on uh, the bar A uh, B is uh, zero. So that was not what I wanted. Uh, all right. So here it is. Uh, then I have the bar BG, and I have the bar BC. So look at this. So here is the force from BC. It's pulling on the pin. Force from BG is pulling on the pin. Then I had the zero force bar uh, FAB. I don't even need to actually consider it because the force is zero, right? I mean, so what is the big deal in even drawing it? So I'm just going to draw it using dotted lines and I'm going to say, okay, hey, this was uh, F, 
a b was zero newton so i don't even need to consider it in my analysis then i have a couple of applied forces i'm going to have the 200 newton force and the 300 newton force okay so this is 200 newtons this is 300 newtons okay and then this is the free body diagram of the pin at b so this is where i am at okay uh, so then i start summing forces in the x and y direction so i'm going to assume positive x and positive y okay so i'm going to draw for each and every pin you see i'm drawing a positive x and a positive y okay so this is x this is y because each and every pin is a separate free body diagram then i sum forces in the x direction set them equal to zero what are my forces i'm going to have fbc minus 300 is equal to zero or fbc is equal to 300 newtons okay i get a positive sign which means that my assumption of it being in tension was right sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero what are my forces 200 positive fbg negative is equal to zero which implies that fbg is equal to 200 newtons i get a positive answer which means that they're both assumed to be in tension okay so i'm done with that then what do i do so okay now i take this figure once again and then i start taking off okay what are the forces i have calculated okay so that's my next step so i bring that down here and then i say okay hey so far so good what have we done i have also calculated uh, these forces so let me uh, take them off so this is done and then this is also done okay i'm going to take this uh, three meters and then bring it down here so that it doesn't clutter our figure so i'm done with uh, bg and i'm done with bc they are not zero force members so i did not cross them off i just tick them off then i go to the uh, pin at c you know because i don't know anything better to do so i draw the free body diagram of the pin c okay I'm just going by alphabetical order, right? I'm not doing this by means of any great strate strategy of any kind. That's, that's a mouthful of words there. Uh, so um, then I draw the pin at C. Here is the pin at C. What are the forces acting on it? I'm going to have the force due to the bar F C D. Okay. F C D. And one, one thing I want to point out. You know, um, when you look at this F, A, B, F, B, A, they are all the same thing. Okay. Uh, F, A, B, F, B, A, they are all the same thing. So just make a note of it. F, B, C, F, C, B, they are all the same thing. So this is uh, just the same as F, C, B. Okay. So if you want to make a note of that, this is the same as F, C, B. This is the same as F, G, B. You can call them by any name that you want. Okay. Uh, if you go back here, this is the same as F, B A, this is the same of F G A. Okay, so that there is no confusion on these names. Uh, so maybe that's a statement that I would like to make at some point here. Okay, so can call F A B as F B A and so on. Need not change the sign on these okay so just because i'm calling fba as fab i'm not going to put a negative sign that is if uh, you know fbc was obtained as 300 newtons do not do fcb is equal to minus 300 okay so that is completely wrong okay so please do not do that okay so you don't need to do any of those things this is because you are considering the magnitude only. The directions are already taken care of by drawing the arrows in the free body diagram. This is because we are looking at magnitude and the direction is taken care of. on the free body diagram and as you see my battery is low so i have to think of a way of plugging this in without uh, hopefully losing all my 
work here so I'm gonna see if I can do that it's gonna be slightly tricky bear with me I never think of these things when I start the problem right <laughs> all right so important thing is uh, if I have FBC is equal to 300 do not write FCB as minus 300 that is meaningless because you take care of the directions on the free body diagram FBC FCB they are all the same thing okay so just don't even worry about those things you are already doing the directions by drawing the arrows on the free body diagram. So just treat these as magnitudes if you are getting the values. Okay. So I go to the pin. Let's see. What are the other forces? I am going to have FBC. Right. So I am just going to call this as FBC. Okay. Look at this once again. That is FBC. Then I have this force of 400 newtons which is acting vertically down. What else do I have? I have force from FCH. As you can see it is at an angle here. F C H, then I'm gonna have a force F C J, right? F C J. It looks like I'm in a tight spot, which is I hope obvious to you, because I have more unknowns than necessary. I have how many unknowns? I have F C D, I have F C J, I have F C H, which means I have four unknowns, and I have only uh, three unknowns, and I have only two equations. So this is completely not a great idea okay and uh, i can also maybe draw a slope triangle if you want here and uh, this is going to be three four and five this could be useful later on who knows so which is why i'm drawing it so this is three this is four and then this is five so it was not a very useful move to go to pin c okay as you see there are more than two unknowns so that's what my next statement is going to be okay so this was a digression here uh, so going back to pin c not a good idea to look at C more than two unknowns, which means I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so I'm going to copy my figure here, which is uh, telling me the status of my situation so far, which is not a very great status because. First of all, my battery is running low. The other thing is uh, I haven't found out the forces that I need to do. So I go to the pin at D. Okay. So the free body diagram of pin D. Okay. What do I do here? Okay. Here I have to be a little careful. Okay. So I draw the figure. And then I immediately recognize, okay, there is CD or DC. It doesn't make a difference to me. FCD and DC are the same. So this is going to be, uh, hang on a minute. So this is going to be the following. So this is FCD. Then I'm going to have FDE, right? These are all assumed to be in tension. And then importantly, I'm going to have the roller reaction at the pin D. Okay, so the roller reaction is, uh, you know, it will prevent the roller from moving this way vertically or horizontally. So that is the type of uh, a reaction or a support that I'm essentially having here. Okay, so this is going to be the reaction D suffix Y. Okay, this is due to the roller. At D. Okay, immediately I will set up my x and y coordinate frame each and every pin i'm setting up an x and y coordinate frame okay positive y positive x and you'll see why that is the case why am i doing it for each and every pin am i a fool probably but there is also another good reason okay um some forces in the x direction you obviously see where i'm going with this some forces in the x direction is equal to zero which tells me that hey f c d is equal to zero newtons which means that CD is a zero force member. CD is a force member and I immediately come and see, okay, hey, now I have gotten rid of this guy FCD and I can do a couple of things. I can go back to the pin at C. I can go back to the pin at C and then I can say that, okay, I have found out FCD to be a zero force member. I will do that later, okay? I'm going to go forward and then do other things on this problem. Uh, but I come to the second criterion for zero force members. Okay, look at this. When I have a pin and if I have two 
non-collinear bars intersect so they have fcd and fde intersecting at the pin and if there is an external force or a support reaction that is collinear with one of the bars then the non-collinear bar is a zero force member that is i have two non-collinear bars fcd and fde at the pin d i have a support reaction or it could be an external force i don't know at this point this is a support reaction in some other problem i could have an actual force acting there and if that is the situation then what I will end up seeing is that since this dy is collinear with de, the other non-collinear bar, which is fcd, is going to be a zero force member. Okay, so I'm going to uh, write this down here. Okay, uh, so this is my second criterion. I'm going to copy this uh, so that I can uh, just uh, change it on and see. Okay, so my second criterion for obtaining uh, zero force members is the following. Okay, so when at a pin, okay, two non collinear bars intersect, intersect, and at that pin, either a reaction or an external force is collinear with one of the bars, either a support reaction or an external force is collinear. Collinear means along the same line is collinear with one of the bars. then the other non-collinear bar is a zero force member. Collinear bar is a zero force member. Okay, so this is the second criterion to obtain zero force members by inspection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to go back to the pin and see right away, but I'll come back to it again. Okay, uh, so I'm going to take my figure from here. I guess I need to copy this. So I'm going to copy this and then bring it down here. So once again, this is the second criterion for obtaining inspection, zero force members by inspection. Okay, so when at a pin, I have two non-collinear bars and... At that same pin, there is either a reaction force or an external force collinear with one of the bars. The other one is a zero force member. Okay, so I bring my um, numbers uh, here and I recognize, okay, I've done things so far. Now I'm going to look at the pin at J. Okay, so just bear with me and you'll see the reasoning for this. Okay, uh, so look at the free body diagram of the pin at J. And I'm going to draw the pen, of course, after drawing the straight line. Well, that is having a life of its own, I say. Every time it happens, I don't know what to tell you. I guess you already know. All right, so here is the pen at J. Then what are the forces acting on it? I'm going to have uh, this uh, force here, F, J, F. Okay, so here is a force F, J, F. And then I have the force FJC and then FJE. Okay, so I'm just going to draw it this way. And then I'm going to have one more force that is drawn this way. Okay, so this is FJC. And then this is FJE. Okay. And uh, let, me, uh, let me take this guy and I guess um, do it this way. Okay, so this is the force. F, J, F, so that it's at an angle. It's not necessarily at right angles. And uh, let me also actually draw a right angle here, okay? Uh, so this is actually at right angles to the line of F, J, E. Okay, now here is what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, let me call this angle here as uh, some angle theta, which I'm not really interested in. And um, let me take this F, J, F and then split it into components. Okay, so I'm going to have a component of FJF uh, in uh, this direction here, 
I'm gonna have a component of FJF in this direction here. So this is gonna be FJF sine theta and then FJF cosine theta. This theta can be found out, okay? I'm not uh, interested in finding it now. All I'm saying is that this angle here is some angle theta, okay? As you can see in the figure there. Now what I'm going to do further is I'm going to say, okay, hey, what is my positive X and positive Y? I'm going to call this as my positive Y and this as my positive X. Okay, so I'm going to call the direction perpendicular to the line of FJC as positive Y and then this is positive X. And so this is my positive convention. And then if I now start summing forces up, look at this. I'm going to sum forces up in the Y direction, the positive Y direction. I can choose the coordinate frame to be inclined because each and every pin is a separate free body diagram. I can choose a coordinate frame which is different for each and every pin because coordinate frames are drawn for our convenience. Okay, so if I look at this, I immediately see that F, J, F sine theta is equal to zero. Sine theta cannot be zero because that is an actual physical angle between two bars, which means that F, J, F is going to be zero. Okay, which means that JF is a two force member. Oh, it's a zero force member, I'm sorry. This means that JF is a zero force member. Okay, and uh, the consequence of this is the following. If I now sum forces in the X direction and I set that equal to zero, then I end up getting FJC is equal to fje which is quite obvious to see right because the other force is zero then these two forces which are along the same line have to be equal to each other and now i come to the third criterion for inspection and finding zero force members okay the third criterion is the following look at the pin j if at a pin which is a free pin which means that if there are no reaction forces or external rollers attached to that pin for example in the pin at j I see that if there are two bars that are collinear and then there is a third bar that is non-collinear, then the non-collinear bar is going to be the zero force member, as you can see very clearly. Okay, And you can also see that the same situation is repeated in the pin at H. You can find out immediately that, okay, uh, we will do this separately, of course, but the bar HF is also a zero force member by that uh, situation. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to come to my third criterion. I'm going to copy my title from here so that I don't need to keep writing this again and again. And you see, it's a very interesting problem, right? Um, so I'm coming to my third criterion. I'm going to write it as a cardinal or an ordinal number, right? So third, first, second, third, these are all ordinal numbers and one, two, three are all cardinal numbers, right? I guess you might remember that from third grade or fourth grade. Um, so, when three bars intersect at a pin, at a free pin, intersect or meet at a free pin, a pin that is not connected to the ground or a roller. And if no external forces are acting on that pin, okay, then if two of the three bars are collinear the third non collinear bar is a zero force member okay so that is the basic idea of uh, this method and why are we writing this down is because whenever you are solving a problem you want to solve the problem as quickly as you can, right? So what is the point in even finding the force on a bar if it is zero? Which means that I want to just inspect the truss 
and then knock it off by just saying okay by inspection what are these zero force numbers okay and uh, so this is the third criterion for deciding zero force members by inspection i'm going to bring my figure from above okay i'm going to copy this and uh, we're going to start finding out another location where the same thing holds true <coughs> excuse me um so once again here uh, let me call this angle here as an angle theta and then let me draw the pin free body diagram at h okay so the free body diagram of pin h if i look at that then this is uh, fairly ripe for uh, the idea of uh, the third criterion that we just discussed okay to find the zero force member by inspection okay and then i have uh, uh, this bar here so these are the three bars i'm going to have f h c f h g and then f f h f okay and so this by the third criterion uh, based on the third criterion just discussed you can see that the pin at h is free of any external forces right this is the pin at h as you can see the circle guy here there are no support reactions, no roller reactions at that pin. FHC and FHG are collinear. Okay. FHC and FHG are collinear. The pin H is a free pin. It is not connected to the ground or it does not have any rollers on it. And then no external forces on pin at h which means that f h f which is non collinear to f h c and f h g is going to be the zero force member okay so this implies that f h f is zero newtons which further implies that f h c is equal to f h j okay fhc is the same as fch fhf is equal to the zero okay so this is the third criterion that has just been applied here okay as you can see it is very simple i'm not even doing any calculations here right and so i can now say that okay if i go back to this figure here then this is going to be the situation then i can also look at the pin at f okay so that's my next stop and it's fairly obvious as to what uh, you will see the situation to be right uh, so i can also do the following i have to do a couple more things before we uh, wrap up this problem free body diagram of pin f okay very quickly what do i have not much okay if i look at the free body diagram of pin f then f e f is assumed to be in tension and then I have another force that is acting here. All the other ones are zero because they are not no longer any interest to me. So this is FGF, okay? All the other ones are zero forces. So if you want, you can draw them and then say that they're zero. There is no need to even draw these things, okay? So F, FJ is equal to zero Newtons. FFH is equal to zero Newtons. So you don't even need to draw them. And then just by means of equilibrium, FGF should be equal to FEF. Okay, so by equilibrium, FGF should be equal to FEF. Okay, so that's something that you can pretty easily see. Okay, and then uh, what is our next step? You know, so I go back to the pin at C. Okay, so now I go back to pin at C. Okay, because I now have an idea of uh, how to solve this problem, right? And you will very much, uh, pretty much see it. Okay, uh, so I go back to the pin at C. I'm going to take the pin free body diagram from what I had drawn earlier. So I'm just going to bring this big guy here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so we know. What are the things that we know? Okay, we know. 
F C D is equal to zero newtons, and then F B C is also known to us, right? This is going to be three hundred newtons. This we had solved for earlier. Okay, so this was three hundred newtons, and F C D was uh, zero newtons, which means that I can take this free body diagram and I can clean it up, and then I can break F C H into components and F C J into components as well. Look at this. Let's going to break them into their components. Uh, let's see. Uh, another uh, one here so two two components just want to make sure that they are shown slightly offset from each other they're still pointing in the vertical direction okay then i'm going to have one component of fch in the horizontal just going to draw it a little bigger here okay and then f cj as well is going to have another component uh, that is in the horizontal uh, let me first of all do a couple of things okay so fbc is the 300 newton force fcd is a zero as i have drawn here and then i'm going to draw fcj hopefully as a straight line okay then this is fcj and uh, this is a component of fcj so that's not going to be fully fcj this is going to be three-fifths fcj and then this is going to be four-fifths f cj likewise i'm going to have this as uh, three fifths f ch and then this is going to be four fifths f ch okay so these are all the forces that i have drawn on there and then all i have to do is uh, just uh, <coughs> apply the equations uh, and then i will figure out what's going on okay uh, so let me sum forces in the x and the y directions so let me start off by choosing my regular x and y as my positive x and positive y. Okay, so this is y, this is x, and then this is positive. I'm going to sum forces in the x direction. Set them equal to zero. What are the forces? I'm going to have minus f b c minus three fifths f c h plus three fifths f c j is equal to zero. Sum of forces in the y, forces pointing up. I'm going to have minus 400 minus 4 fifths F C H minus 4 fifths F C J is equal to zero. Right? That's about the forces that I have. Um, if I then simplify, if I call this as equation one, if I call that as equation two. From equation one, after I simplify and clean it up, I end up getting the following. Okay, so F C H minus F C J. Okay, uh, this is equal to minus five hundred newtons, and uh, from two, I end up getting F C H plus F C J is equal to plus five hundred. This I'm going to call as equation 3. This is just basic algebra. Okay, there is nothing special going on here. If I add equation 3 and equation 4, you'll obviously see that I end up getting... Uh, I'm sorry, this is also negative here. I apologize. This is a negative sign here. Okay, if I end up adding equation 3 and equation... Uh, or equation 3 minus equation 4, let me, let me do that. Okay, so let me do equation 3. Uh, minus equation 4 okay so i will end up getting f c j uh, to be equal to zero newtons which means that c j is also a zero force member but i could not have obtained this by inspection alone okay so this is also a force member okay so f c j and we also know that f c j is equal to f j e from before right which means that those are all zero newtons okay so this particular fact which i'm going to call here i'm going to put an arrow on it and uh, this we could not have found from inspection alone we would have actually had to solve for this to find out okay and uh, since f uh, cj is zero f ch is equal to minus 500 newtons okay so eventually i also see that f ch is equal to 
minus 500 newtons okay so i have all of this written down here and probably on the last step of this uh, problem as you might see fch is minus 500 newtons and fch also is the same as fhg okay so we know that fch is equal to fhg from before so that's also equal to minus 500 newtons okay this was because uh, we found out that fhf was a zero force member so fch and hg were the same all right so this is the last step in the process and then i can do one more thing okay i can also go to the pin at e which i haven't drawn yet so let me collect all my thoughts and let me bring back uh, my figure here very last step i will just mark out all the forces that i have calculated so far okay so this was uh, calculated f c h was calculated i found out that f c j was a zero force member i'm not going to put it as a cross mark because that was not found by inspection okay and uh, the very last thing i need to do is uh, i need to find out uh, the pin at e okay so a free body diagram of pin at e okay and i can get rid of many of the zero force members and so on here uh, we found out that fje is zero okay so with this was just written above here so fje is also zero so if you want you can put a small cross mark there a cross mark there just saying that okay they were zero but i did not find them by inspection i found them by solving okay and i don't know why that is skewed up uh, but here is the idea so pin e what are the forces acting 300 newtons 400 newtons uh, these are the applied forces as you can see okay so that's uh, I'm sorry 200 newtons and 300 newtons and then I have FDE pulling on the pin assuming it to be in tension and then I'm going to have FEF and we had obviously found out that FJE was zero okay so let me mark it but then let me say fje we found this to be zero newtons so that was not of any concern to us okay then if i set up a coordinate frame i'm going to set a positive x and positive y as usual right there is uh, not much to change in terms of uh, what we're doing here once again I'm, I'm having a coordinate system for each and every pin which is okay because each and every pin is a separate free body diagram okay so if i do the sum of all the forces in the x direction and set them equal to zero then i'm going to get fef is equal to or let me do this step by step okay just so that we are not confusing ourselves so minus fef plus 300 is equal to zero which means that fef is equal to 300 newtons and typically in an exam or something you know i wouldn't even be doing all these steps because it is very obvious just from the figure that fde is equal to 200 newtons right but then you know just for the sake of um, doing it let me do it fde is equal to 200 newtons and i think with that we have found out all of the forces that are required for us and f ef is the same as f uh, gf right and so this is also the same as f gf okay and uh, so then let me list out all the forces as the problem requires me to do okay so the zero force members these are f a b f a g f h f and then i also found out that f uh, j f was a zero force member then fcj was a zero force member okay and then i guess uh, fjf uh, so that's about it uh, there were like one two three four five i think six of them right uh, so there is also fje uh, was a zero force member the ones that we found out by inspection was fab fag that was using the first criterion then f uh, dc was also a, a zero force uh, member so that's something uh, that i have to write down here so fdc was also a zero force member so zero newtons if you wish okay and then uh, this was uh, by using criterion number one 
okay then this was by using criterion number two and uh, then jf was by using criterion number three okay and then hf was also by using criterion number three and these were obtained by solving and then not by inspection okay uh, so these were the zero force members for us and uh, then the rest of the bars okay so the rest of the bars i have the following forces f b c was 300 newtons in tension and then f b g was 200 newtons in tension okay f b c was uh, uh f b g was that then f c h was 500 minus 500 newtons which means that f c h is 500 newtons in compression please do not double count please do not write minus 500 newtons and in compression which means it will tell me that this is actually in tension so write it as minus 500 newtons and then tell me that okay hey this is in compression okay then f h g was also minus 500 newtons which means that f h g is 500 newtons in compression okay and then i had um, f e f okay which was 300 newtons in tension sorry and then f uh, f g was also 300 newtons in tension and then lastly f d e which was 200 newtons in tension okay so these are the rest of the bars and uh, this is typically how you would write your answers off and from the next problem onwards you know you will not be for the zero force members you will first inspect the truss for zero force members and then figure out by using criteria one two and three can i find out if there are zero force members if i can then of course yes i'm just going to make use of that and i'm not even going to show any solution to the zero force members i'll just focus on the bars that are actually having a force on them okay uh, this was an excellent problem in my opinion. Um, thank you for your patience. Um, I hope you're all staying safe. Uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.